Hi, in this video I'm going to develop this combination um, flash ROM drive and EMS board. Um, for an ISA computer, you know, like an IBM PC, the old 8-bit kind. This is the one I just finished building. I'm going to walk through the design of it and the motivation and talk about the implementation. Um, so the motivation for this originally came from this thing here, which is a Boca Start card. I bought this back in the late 80s, early 90s, sometime around that time period, to run uh, one of my nodes on my bulletin board system without having a physical disk. Uh, so what this is, is it's a bunch of flash chips, total of eight of them, I believe they're 128K each, so you could have up to one megabyte of uh, flash. Um, and this would function as either a floppy or a hard drive. You'd, you know, store your DOS and other files in the flash and you could boot off of this. No spinning media. So it's quite expensive at the time. Um, this is my original card. I think I could only afford two flash chips for it. So that was only, what, 256K of storage space. Uh, but it was enough to boot DOS you know, run command.com and then bring up whatever I needed so that my network um, could pull stuff from the host system to boot up that node of the bulletin board. So I thought this was cool. You know, there's there's lots of other more practical things that you can do. For example, here is Sergei Kislev's uh, compact flash board. Um, here we've got 64 megabytes of compact flash plugged in there and you know, this looks like hard drive. It's a lot more practical, um, but I kind of wanted to do, you know, this old school thing kind of like I owned before. So I came up with this um, using slightly more modern 512K flash chips. I could do a total of two megabytes. I have uh, visions of making a longer one that would do four megabytes with eight chips. That's maybe to come. In the course of designing this, um, I realized that, you know, these, these flash chips and static RAM chips are very similar and um, paging flash and paging static RAM, similar implementation, uh, I could make a card that would be either the flash ROM drive or you could put static RAM in it and use it as expanded memory. So this is really a general purpose uh, pageable memory card uh, for an 8-bit computer that can use either flash or SRAM and can be either a flash drive for persistent storage or expanded memory um, for having additional dynamic memory at runtime. So let's talk about how memory paging works. So this is the one megabyte address space of the typical um, IBM early, you know, IBM compatible computer. Uh, down here we've got conventional memory. That's where your program runs. There's some reserved memory, um, to interrupt vector table and stuff some display memory, um, some ROMs out here, you know, hard disk ROMs, you know, maybe you've got some other ROMs, uh, your BIOS, and then there's this chunk in here that often ends up used for various purposes like EMS and network cards and lots of different things that can show up in there. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to grab this 64K window from E0000 um, to F0000 and chop it into four banks. So, I'll do the greatest job of doing this, but bank zero, bank one, bank two, bank three. So this, this whole block was 64K, each bank is going to be 16K. Then what you do is you put a whole bunch more memory out here to the side. And here we've got two megabytes. And we will let you take these bank pointers and point them to various 16K pages. So we've got page zero. I don't know. Page 20, you know, maybe you've got a couple pointing up here. So at runtime, you, you can adjust these pointers anywhere you want, uh, from this address space to this address space. So that lets you have two megabytes 
in 16 4K chunks up to four chunks at a time mapped into that address space. So you can see how this, you know, can work in either a storage situation or a RAM situation. You know, in storage, it's two megabytes of flash, read all the flash. Um, in a RAM situation, this is two megabytes of RAM, you can page in the RAM, read, write it, do whatever you want. Okay, so how are we going to go about doing this? Well, I've got this schematic written out here. Um, a lot of this uh, ideas came from other sources on the internet, so for example, this whole paging thing um, is is the design that Sergey Kisilev used in the Zeta 2 uh, Z80 project. I realized, you know, that that uh, paging scheme would work just fine on an x86. Um, so I just borrowed that particular design and used it for this, um, with a few adaptations, of course. Um, so anyway, you know, we have. The ISA connector over here, you know, this is your uh, PC's bus. Most of my cards I like to bring out the ISA connector to a dual row header. That way I can easily um, connect probes and stuff to it. So that's what this connector is. ISA bus, uh, duplicate of that on a header. Then we've got some addressing stuff. So over here, let's do this one first. This is the addressing for the memory window. So this sets, um, you recall here, I had um, our bank set up at E0000. Uh, so that's the purpose of this block here, is to locate that um, paging area in memory. Uh, so here we have some dip switches, some resistors to pull them down, and a 74HCT688 magnitude comparator. What that says is uh, when one set of inputs um, matches the other set of inputs um, output a low signal and so you know one set of inputs is our dip switches the other set of inputs is the high um, the high highest most address line so this allows us to select that window so we set these switches to E0000 there's another addressing section up here that allows us to set the port. Um, this is also connected to a bunch of dip switches, um, addressing pins. So this is gonna let us locate our bank register in memory, which we're gonna set that to port 260. Um, I kinda like using the dip switches because that lets me easily set almost any arbitrary address um, I want in memory, um, you know, if I didn't want this frame at E0000, I could put it at D0000, for example. Or if something else was using port 260, I could put this at port 270 or 280. Or, um, it's very useful, I think, to have these 74 um, HCT688s with, with the dip switches. Um, you know, for a consumer product, a couple jumpers and a couple of choices, but for something we want to be able to hack and maybe use in different scenarios and combine with different hardware, arbitrary addresses are nice. Um, so anyway, over here we've got the address um, frame location. Over here we've got the port for the addressing uh, for the for the port registers. Now we've got to implement the port registers, which would be this section down here. And this is the part that uh, really came from the uh, the Zeta two. Um, so what we have here is 274HCT670. Uh, now these are four, um, four by four register files. So what they can do is they can store four bits of data um, in four different addresses. And those, combine them together, will make our, our page register. I think I've already covered this in another one of my videos, one of the ones on uh, CPM on the RC2014, so I'm not going to dive into a whole lot of detail on the page register and, and how it works. Just know that each one of these um, bank addresses gets stored in these uh, page registers. There's two bits that select the address in the page register for writing and two different bits that set the address for reading. So to write the page register, 
you go over here um, from the port selection. So right to port 260, you end up setting a row in the page register. When you read the page register, it comes from over here. Um, read at memory address E0000, and you read some bits from the page register, and you put those bits on the address bus. So this is going to let you select uh, from this page register some address in this big two megabyte window. So you can see over here um, that the outputs of the page register go into these address lines which are then connected to the upper address lines in these memory chips. At the same time over here um, we get enough address lines, one, two, three, four, five of them, to get us up to 512K of addressing space. Then we take the next two lines, we run them out to a two to four decoder, and that will select our chip selects. So chips one, two, three, and four. That gives us, that takes that 512K space and multiplies it up to a uh, two megabyte space. You'll notice there is one final line out of the uh, page register that's not connected to anything. Um, in theory, if we wanted a bigger board, make this thing wider, uh, we could have used a 3 to 8 decoder and had 8 memory chips. Um, so anyway, moving along, here's the memory chips, four of them. Each one has a chip select. Chip select comes from that decoder. In the middle here is a uh, buffer. This buffer, when the uh, window is selected, will enable data transfer to this set of chips. What else do we have? Oh, uh, one of the important things, um, if, if you want this thing to operate as a flash ROM drive, um, then it's very important that your initial state on reboot always has a known bank selected. So on reboot, you really want page zero because you want to actually be able to boot off of your flash drive. Uh, so on reboot, uh, this flip-flop will disable these two page registers. Those outputs uh, go into high impedance state. They're all pulled down to ground which will cause it to select chip select zero and to select the lowermost page on that chip. That puts us always in known state at reset. So then once our driver starts up, it will write to a page enable um, register, which happens to be at port 264, comes off of that decoding. Um, that will enable these two uh, page um, registers. These outputs will go out of high impedance into uh, normal output, um, pull-ups or the pull-downs are no longer um, relevant and we will start paging. Um, the whole purpose of that flip-flop um, is to allow us to put this thing in a known state at system reset time and that enables us if we configure this um, as a flash ROM drive um, to be able to boot off the flash ROM. Um, finally, there's one last wrinkle in this uh, design, which is that the pinouts for the static RAM and the flash ROM chips um, are not completely identical. Um, that, that's kind of annoying. You can't just you know unplug a flash ROM and, and put in a static RAM in its place. And the reason for that is that the flash ROM and the uh, static RAM use a different pin uh, for the write signal. So on on the static, so on the flash ROM, the write signal's uh, pin 31. On the uh, static RAM, pin 31 is an address line. So you had to put a couple jumpers in here. Um, you set the jumpers to one side, and it will treat these four sockets as flash devices. You set the jumpers to the other side, it will treat these four sockets as static RAM devices. Uh, is there anything else on here? Um, this here. These are uh, pull-ups of the data bus. 
I, I got the idea for these pull-ups from the low-tech um, EMS board. Um, low-tech board, let's see, I have one of those around. So I have I have low-tech board over here. Um, I'll talk about that at some point in the video. It's another option if you want to do EMS. Uh, but I got these, these pull-ups from the low-tech design. Um, I wasn't quite sure why low-tech was using those at first, but then I think I figured it out. And I think the reason is that it makes it easy to detect um, when one of these chips is not installed. So let's say you don't have um, one of these sockets populated. Um, the driver can boot up, it can scan that address range. If every single byte in the address range is pulled up to FF, because these are pull-ups, um, then you can conclude, well, there's no chip there, we're just getting the pull-ups instead. And that would allow your driver to automatically detect how many chips are installed. So here's the board. Um, straightforward implementation of the schematic I just showed you, uh, fabricated at Osh Park. So here are the four memory sockets. I currently have uh, flash ROMs installed. Um, here are the two jumpers. Put the jumpers to the left. So flash ROM sockets, put the jumpers to the right. These would be static RAM sockets. Uh, so this board as configured is configured as a flash drive. I'll show it used as an EMS board um, in a bit. Um, so looking at some of this here, we've got the two um, dip switches for setting the address. Um, here we've got the 274 um, HCT 688s, pull-ups associated with those. Um, here are the 74 HCT 670, the two uh, paging registers. Um, this here is probably the uh, 2 to 4 decoders. This here is the flip-flop. And this one here would be the... Uh, data buffer for the data pins. We've got the pull downs here for the paging register so it boots into a known state. Um, over here we've got the pull ups for the data bus um, so we can detect the FD sockets. And then here is the unpopulated uh, double row header that I mentioned in the schematic. Uh, so let's give this board a try. Okay, so let's get ready to try this out. I have my XI8088 here. It's the XI8088 board. Um, this is a low-tech memory board because I was having some issues with the XI8088's onboard memory. Here's a VGA card. This is my game card and um, parallel I.O. adapter. I have removed um, the floppy controllers. The floppy cables are sitting there and I have removed the compact flash adapter. So I'm going to take my uh, flash board here with three uh, flash chips on it. I have a 1.4 megabyte um, floppy image programmed into those three chips. I'm going to plug it in. And now it's time to boot up. Okay, turning on the XI8088. This is just the uh, BIOS boot up. And here we are. So it, it um, you can see I wrote a flash BIOS here and programmed that into the flash chip. Um, it was programmed page register at 260, frame segment E000. Um, and what it did was it captured the INT 13 handler, that's the BIOS um, interrupt, and installed its own INT 13s. And what we have now is a um, Virtual floppy drive implemented in Flash. We boot it up, DOS. So, dir. Lots of stuff there. GW basic. 10 print. Brown. There we go. Now, a check disk. Yep, 1.4 megabytes disk space. If we try to write something to it, we should get a write protect. Um, reason for that is in this BIOS, I only implemented it as a read only device. Um, reason for that, uh, part of it because it's kind of a lot of work uh, to write to Flash, and I haven't uh, written uh, the routines to write to Flash. 
But the other part of it is I'm a little bit worried that um, the way the DOS file system is implemented, um, that what we're going to do is we're going to wear out the flash relatively quickly if you do many writes to it. Um, flash memory can actually get worn out. It's got fixed lifetime to it. I think the uh, data sheet on the chip says 10,000 cycles guaranteed. And you know, if we overwrite the fat blocks 10,000 times, you know, we could wreck our flash chips. Uh, nevertheless, I might, I might uh, give that a shot at some point. Um, now let's look at reconfiguring this board uh, to function as an EMS board instead of as a flash drive. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out these three uh, flash chips. And in its place, I will install four AS6C4008 uh, static RAM chips. They're all ready to go. Okay, that was a test. I put that one in upside down. So if anyone was watching, just flip it around. That wouldn't have been good for, uh, wouldn't have been good to put that in upside down. There we go, and then we have to take these two jumpers, move them from the left to the right. Now it is configured as a static RAM um, expanded memory board. Obviously we can't boot off of it anymore, so we're going to bring out our compact flash and use that as our boot device. Compact flash board. Lately, these things have been giving me a little bit of grief lining up. There we go. And EMS board. Okay, now we are ready to boot up. Okay, let's uh, boot it up goes. And it's booting off of the XT IDE, uh, the compact flash, booting drive C. Um, and what we need to do is we need to um, configure uh, the EMS driver. So we're going to do DOS Edlin config.sys. list and then line two I just want to say device equals SBEMS SBEMM.exe and that is going to be our EMS driver. So this EMS driver um, so it's, this is identical to the uh, low tech um, EMS driver um, which the source for was available on the web except in one um, very tiny minute detail and that is that my board has that page enable register and you need to write a one to the page enable register before you can start uh, banking pages. So for that I had to make a little tweak to the driver but other than that the low tech driver was great and uh, worked with my card almost straight out of the box. 
Oh, I mean, what do you, what is save? Let's see, was W S? Uh, question mark. E for exit. How about that? There we go. I bet that did it. Config dot sys. There we go. So let's try Control Alt Dell. Again, we're booting the uh, Compact Flash, booting Drive C. There we go. See, there went the EMS driver. Um, so it found 128 pages, uh, which is 2,048 kilobytes, 2 megabytes of EMS. Um, let's see. Let's go into Check It. Check It. memory um, let's just one run one test this is actually going to test uh, both main memory and the EMS you can see down here for expanded memory we've got two little bars um, we'll get down there to the expanded memory soon enough here we go testing the expanded memory very exciting Testing the second megabyte of expanded memory. Okay, there, all done, um, succeeded. Um, I did speed that segment up just a little bit uh, because it took a little while to test all that memory and I didn't want to just uh, have a bunch of dead space, but we can see um, the EMS board, it passed, um, check it, so EMS is working and we can go use that to give ourselves two more megabytes of memory um, in our 8088. Okay, so a while ago I mentioned making an even bigger board that would accommodate eight chips instead of four. Uh, this is that bigger board. You can see the relative size comparison here. Um, this one I actually had fabricated at Seed Studio. Um, I was going to do a segment in the video on this, but unfortunately this board really didn't work out all that well for me. So I think the problem um, that I had with this larger board is that as you added more and more um, static RAM chips it got less and less stable up until the point where I had eight system was just completely unstable and would crash almost immediately after boot up and I think what happened there is although I buffered the data lines uh, with that data buffer I did not buffer the address lines and there's about 16 address lines that connect to each one of these chips and I think as we added more um, we just put that much more load on the address bus and eventually it was just uh, too much we got some interference signal reflection something went wrong and adding these extra chips just wrecked stability so for this bigger board um, I'm gonna have to go back and re-spin it again with some address buffers um, to buffer those addresses but in the meantime you know I am gonna put both designs up on the website the revised 8-chip once I add address buffering and of course the 4-chip which you saw demonstrated in this video that works pretty well. Okay so finally I wanted to mention this uh, low-tech EMS board. Um, this is blue one here you can buy these online. Um, you can buy them uh, just the bare board or you could buy them already assembled I believe. Um, I briefly used this board um, in my PC uh, before switching over to, to the one I just demoed. Um, this is a good board. Um, in my case, I did buy the bare board and assembled it myself. A lot of work doing all that um, surface mount. Um, the low-tech board uh, was where I got the EMS driver uh, that just happened to work almost unmodified with my own board. Um, 
There are some, some similarities in design. These are um, AS6C 4008 uh, RAM chips, just like I used in the other board. So the paging mechanism is implemented a little bit differently than the paging mechanism I demoed for my board. It actually has four different chips. I think they're these four that implement the paging. Um, but anyway, this, this low-tech board works great, and it's um, if you have a retro PC and you want to add EMS, just wanted to recommend uh, looking at the low-tech website and looking into uh, their products. Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sand rail stuff. Bye.